Jason, as much as we're beginning the planning for the 2012-2013 FY um, school year budget, this is a public hearing and this is the first step in the budget development process. This process runs from July 1, 2012 through July, June 30th, 2013. We will use input from the public hearings to develop the FY 2013 proposed budget, which we will present to the Board of Education in December. As the school district continues to face reduced revenues, it is critical that all stakeholders in education, students, parents, business partners, and residents take part in the early stages of this process. So we're glad the individuals who have pre-registered and we normally require pre-registration, but we do understand that um, we communicated via our webpage that individuals could just sign up at the meeting, so we will honor that this evening. So with that, we will begin with a short presentation and then ask for the individuals who have signed up to make public comment to make those comments. Each individual will have three minutes to speak. And if there are any other individuals who um, wanted to make comments this evening, we will allow that as well. So with that, I'll yield to Mr. Matt Stansky, our Chief Financial Officer, to walk us through the short presentation. Good evening. Um, <clears throat> what, the, what we'll briefly uh, discuss is act, the actual budget process and how the district actually obtains money, and then how we then go about um, requesting appropriations of those funds. So, uh, Really three components of the budget process. The superintendent proposes a budget to the Board of Education in December, and then the board then requests a budget, reviews that budget, and then ultimately proposes a budget to the county executive in March. In, all in the meantime, final state funding decisions and county budget decisions um, are going on simultaneously, and then um, with a the recommend, then a recommendation ultimately from the county council, with then the board reconciling their budget to what the recommendation was from the council. To give you a brief overview of where um, we, uh, where the district gets funds, um, for fiscal year 12, we had a budget of 1.614 billion. Approximately 99% of that revenue comes from three main sources: the state of Maryland, county government, and federal government. The remaining, the remaining 1% are our board sources, and those are usually fees for use of our buildings, tuition, things of that nature. So, just again to reiterate, the board. The district has really no revenue raising authority. We can only spend what we get from the federal government, county government, and state government. To go more details in the timeline, again, the superintendent proposes a spending plan in December. The board holds hearings on that plan in January and February. Then the board votes on a, on a budget and submits that budget to the county executive on March 1st. And then that budget comes back over from the county council in June, and the board reconciles with it in June. The county timeline is that once, uh, once we, uh, the board sends the budget over on March 1st, the executive proposes a budget which includes the school system budget to the council on March 15th. The county council then holds budget hearings in March and April. All in the meanwhile, the General Assembly is also approving at the state level the state budget on the, in the March-April time frame. And as, uh, again, on the state side, the governor proposes a budget to the General Assembly in January Budget hearings are held with the General Assembly in January and March, and then General Assembly approves that budget in the March-April time frame. So what really drives that revenue? Like I said earlier, we have 99% of our revenue comes from those three major jurisdictions, federal, state, and local government. But what plays a significant role in how we get money is our K-12 enrollment. And as um, enrollment continues to go down, Obviously, funds continue to go down, but I think it's very key for the public to understand that we do not get money for every student that attends our school system. It's only K through 12. So we have a pre-K population of nearly 6,500 students in which the district receives no support from the state or county that, is, that these, these students are all funded through the school system. And uh, so current year enrollment, so the enrollment as of September 30th of this month is used to project revenue for the next fiscal year. And if you have a continuing decline in enrollment, and the other factor that, that uh, weighs into how much money we get from state and county is our wealth, and wealth meaning accessible tax base and income tax base as a as comparison to the state of Maryland, the result of that is reduced per pupil funding. 
And one thing I wanted to, we wanted to talk about with the public also is a major shift in how we're actually funding schools um, for, this, for this next fiscal year. Currently, our schools are funded by a staffing formula through the central office and that each school is uh, given an allocation uh, based on the number of students they have in the, in the system or in their, in their re relative schools. What, what student-based budgeting is, it changes from actually funding schools to actually funding student need. So there's a base per pupil allotment that the, that the district will give each school and then there's certain weights that are derived depending on the need of the student. So the more needier the student, the higher the value of that student from a financial standpoint, the more resources that are needed to educate that student. And so um, this is a major shift. We think um, it allows principals more in school communities more flexibility in how they structure their school to meet the needs of the students in that building. So it's really more differentiated now based on school and student need as opposed to a just a generic staffing formula based on a number of students in your building. So it's really going to give, like I said, principals, school communities more flexibility in how to structure their school to meet the needs of those students. And so with that, I will um, turn it back over to Dr. Height, and we will begin uh, public comment. Thank you, Mr. Stansky. We have two individuals who have signed up to speak. The first is Tony Andofado. Is Andofado? Push the blue button. Push the button. Okay. Okay. Good evening, Dr. Height and staff. I am Tony Andolfato, an county resident. Once again, I am asking for full funding for library media specialists for all of our schools. I know that last year, severe cuts had to be made, and once again, it seems like media bore the brunt of the cuts. The cuts for media were worse than the cuts in 1982. At least then, all of the elementary schools had a half-time media spe specialist. It took from 1982 until about 2006 for all schools to regain a full-time position. I don't think our students should have to wait that long again for full-time library media specialists in all of our schools. Today, I learned there is a proposal for all schools to have a .5 position next year. Is this fair to the students? They are being shortchanged. This year, some of the shared in some of the shared schools, many students only get to the media center twice a month, providing they are not scheduled for a Monday visit, since we have a lot of Mondays off. We want we want we say we want our children to read, but we are not providing them with an opportunity to get books as often as they should. While I have always been very fortunate to have a principal who valued the library media specialist and wanted a full-time library media specialist, I understand that some principals do not want a full-time library media specialist. However, there is a system in place for when a principal feels that a staff member is not doing his or her job. And have these principals spoken to their library media specialists? Because unless the principal has spoken to the library media specialist about his or her concerns, the library media specialist may have no idea that the principal would like changes or they're transferring to another school. By the way, did you know you have created a weight loss program with your cuts to media? Some of the shared library media specialists have said that as a result of having several schools, they have lost weight. Please don't cut any library media positions and work to bring back every school to a full-time library media position. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you, Ms. Andrew The next speaker is Jennifer Harris. Good evening, Superintendent Height, staff. I see several members of the school board here as well. Um, appreciate you all being here. I'm going to go a little bit off track for a second. My name is Jennifer Harris. I live in Akakeek, Maryland. You all rep, uh, recognize me from last spring, I'm sure. I'm disappointed because uh, I don't see the rest of the community that was here last February complaining about all the things that were cut here tonight to help us start the process. So I'm going to criticize our county as a whole for not doing more to speak out about how we can participate in this process from the front end and commend you all 
for allowing us the opportunity to speak, but I certainly wish more of my uh, fellow community would be here to join us in this discussion. Um, I'm just going to go over some brief comments and then um, I'm, I might ask for a couple extra minutes. I don't know how long you allocate. Last year you're very strict because there are over 100 people. I hope you take the time to listen to everything I've got to say. Uh, last spring I came before you as a prospective parent. I had my two children with me. We're four and two at the time. I wanted to urge you to do whatever was necessary to make sure that our teachers and their students are given top priority. Now I'm glad to see that the student-based budgeting process aims to do that. That's a real step in the right direction. I think that's good news. I know that uh, last spring as I watched the process unfold from the sidelines after I spoke to you all, it became evident to me that while our public commitment to put our children first was stated, our political and personal agendas often took priority in the following discussions. Um, I spoke to you all and I also spoke to County Council about my concerns later in the process. Um, I'm, not, I'm sure, I think we made a little bit of um, headway, but I think we have a long ways to go. Uh, unfortunately, as a result of that experience, I decided to enroll my daughter in a private school rather than um, choose my local public school. However, I'm not giving up on this system and I'm not going to give up on my campaign to do more until I feel comfortable putting faith in public school in Akakeek. Not all parents are fortunate enough to have the choice that I have, and I recognize that, and that's why I'm here today. I'm not sure anyone on the school board currently has children enrolled in PGPCS. Um, I'm delighted we have a student representative uh, who comes out to our meetings. I think we need parent advocate on there as well. Um, unless you're a parent and you face the um, challenge of how to, how to best educate your child, I don't think you can really understand what we as parents have to go through in making this kind of choice. Um, the last time I was here, I did supply you with some information about what I thought happens when we start developing our budget from the central office out. I know I was critical of some of the things that I found when I dug down into the budget. Um, you'll recall that in the Division of Human Resources, I learned we're paying $65,000 today to entry clerks, $90,000 to secretaries, more than $100,000 to several mid-level bureaucrats. Why? I don't think I ever got answers about that, and I would like to have an answer about that. Um, I'm not, not trying to um, start a fight about salaries, but I will say I'm a public employee myself. I'm a very senior level executive in another jurisdiction in this area, uh, doing communications and media, and I don't make the, this salary for any of these jobs, let alone one that requires a high school degree. I have an advanced degree. So we need to look at these salaries. Well, I understand that cutting those salaries barely scratches the surface of what is needed. So I do understand the challenges that you're facing. I have scoured the FY 2012 budget, found other examples of waste, or maybe not waste, but things that I just simply don't understand and, and need to have a better understanding of as we move forward. Uh, the IT department has two deputy department heads. We pay two million in contractor services. I'm not ever sure I could figure out what that was for. 17 people are employed in our print office to copy teacher curriculums. I'm an environmental engineering by background. Um, I think that we can develop some more green technology to distribute information like that rather than having people print materials. Uh, 40 computer technicians, analysts in the central office and similar positions in the schools. I just wanna, I want clarification because I, I found this in the budget last spring and maybe it was fixed or addressed but I don't think I ever got answers about that so I'd like clarification. And I'll leave you my information so okay. that you can follow okay. up with me. Because I, I have a platform to talk to the community and I would like to help them understand that better too. Because that was a concern. Sure, and Ms. Harris, we're running, yeah. you have gone, I gave you a couple extra minutes. Okay. And so um, we can collect your information so that we can get those questions answered okay. for you. I think it's important for us to be able to answer your questions as a part of the budget process. Right. And even inside of this process, any time we get any questions, we post all of the questions and the responses so that you not only see the answers to your questions, but everyone else does as well. Great. Thank you very much, Dr. Hyde. I appreciate that. You'll be seeing more of me, and if you want my input, I'd be glad to come back and participate further. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That concludes the um, the two individuals who signed up previously to speak. Do we have other individuals who are in the audience who care to speak to the budget development process?
Seeing none, I want to thank you for coming out to our first public hearing. We will have a second public hearing on Tuesday, October 25th. And that will be 7 o'clock, and I will ask, it will be here in the same room, and I will ask that for that meeting, if anyone wishes to speak, that they sign up ahead of time, and you can do that on our website or by calling in. So with that, thank you for coming out this evening. Good evening.